Good evening, you are watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos issues two royal decrees. The State Council discusses the proposals of the Advertisement Regulation and Training System. And the 2020 e-census for residents, houses and establishments works on building a comprehensive and cohesive database to link between social and economic development plans in the Sultanate. Those were the headlines now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed issued two royal decrees. Royal Decree number 55 over 2019, promulgating the statistics and information law. Article 1, the attached statistics and information law shall be applied. Article 2, the chairman of the board of directors of the National Center for Statistics and Information shall issue the executive regulation and the decisions necessary for the implementation of the provisions of the attached law after the approval of the center's board of directors. He shall also issue strategic national data after the approval of the Center's Board of Directors and the Council of Ministers and until such executive regulation is issued. The applicable regulation and decision shall apply, provided they shall not contravene with the provisions of the attached law. Article 3, the statistics law issued by Royal Decree No. 29 over 2001 shall be cancelled. All that contravenes with the attached law or contradicts with its provision shall also be cancelled. Article 4, this decree shall be published in the official gazette and come into force from the following day of its issue. Royal Decree No. 56 over 2019, amending the law of pensions and end-of-service benefits for Omani Royal Court staff. Article 1, the attached am amendments on law of pensions and end-of-service benefits for Omani Royal Court staff shall be made. Article 2, all that contradicts with the attached documents, attached amendments and contravenes with its provisions shall be cancelled. Article 3, this decree shall be published in the official gazette and come into force from the following day of its publication. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency Alexander Lukashenko, President of Belarus, on his country's National Day. His Majesty the Sultan sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency Luarzento Cortizo, President of Panama, on his election as new President of the Republic. His Majesty also sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency David Hurley for swearing in as the Governor General of Australia. A source in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs commented on reports on media and social media that establishing diplomatic relations between the Sultanate and the State of Israel is unfounded. The source stressed that the Sultanate is keen to exert endless efforts to create the diplomatic conditions to restore communications between all international and regional parties to make peace between the Palestine National Authority and the Government of Israel, leading to the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. The State Council discussed the proposal of advertisement regulation presented by the Cultural Media and Tourism Committee and the proposal of developing training system presented by the Educational and Research Committee. During the session, the members of the State Council reviewed the committee's recommendations for the advertisement regulation through finding a law to organize the work of the advertising market in the Sultanate. They also discussed the proposal of developing training system through studying the current and highlight the challenges facing the training system. His Excellency Dr. Yahya bin Mahfoud al-Mandri, Chairman of the State Council, headed the meeting. The National Center for Statistics and Information explained that 2020 e-census for residents, houses and establishments shall work on building a comprehensive and cohesive database to link between social and economic developments, development plans in the Sultanate of Oman. The center revealed that the national campaign Your Data, Your Identity urges citizens, residents and establishments on updating their data and validating their accuracy at a number of public institutions. 
On a statement to Oman Channel, His Excellency Dr. Khalifa bin Abdullah Barwani, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Center for Statistics and Information, said that contrary to the previous conventional census system, which was very expensive and cannot be conducted on an annual basis, the e-census can also offer instant and periodic results, which facilitate decision and policy making process in the country. Still to come in our news bulletin. Penguins and seals stay cool in the zoo as Belgrade swelters in heat. Ministry of Housing is currently working on a new geographical information system for land plot management. The new system offers high definition maps and detailed cadastral sketches to facilitate land registration and establish geospatial data using internet capabilities. The new system will be able to detect changes that occur on each land plot over a period of time. This in return will minimize informal settlements and land claims. The system also offers detailed readings of electric, water and internet services in the country, starting from the village level and up to the governorate level. His Excellency Sayyid Mohammed bin Sultan al Saidi, Minister of State and Governor of the FAR, met Captain Antonio Gonzalez del Commander of the Spanish ship Mendez Nunes. During the meeting, they exchanged the issues of the common concern of the two countries. The process of Al-Hazm exercise was observed by the members of the 32nd batch of the Command and Staff College. During their visit, Major General Matar bin Salem Al-Blushi, Commander of the Royal Army of Oman, Major General Matar bin Ali Al-Abedani, Commander of the Royal Air Force of Oman, and Major General Amr bin Salem Al-Amri, Commander of the Special Sultan's Forces, Special Forces, were briefed by the Steering Committee of the exercise. The students also presented how they interacted with the events of the exercise and the appropriate solutions to the supposed issues of its stages and events. OPEC members sat down today with other major oil producing nations to finalize a plan to cut production for another nine months in a bid to shore up prices at a time of waning demand. Members of the Organization of the Petrol Exporting Countries agreed yesterday to the extension of the cut and key non-OPEC member Russia has urged others to agree as well. Heading into the meeting, OPEC members Saudi Arabia said it was 100% sure non-OPEC members would approve the extension. The, ton, the, the 10 non-OPEC nations present at the meeting at OPEC's headquarters in Vienna include Mexico, Bahrain, Oman and Kazakhstan. The United States, one of the world's major oil producers, is not involved in the discussions and won't be bound by any agreement. Chinese President Xi Jinping met visiting Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Beijing today. Both leaders expressed their willingness to strengthen bilateral relationships during talks following the official welcoming ceremony. Turkey is one of the first countries that joined China's trillion U.S. dollar Belt and Road Initiative to build ports, highways, power plants and other infrastructure linking it to Europe, Africa and other parts of Asia. Heavy monsoon rains in western India caused at least three walls to collapse and onto huts and city shanties, killing at least 27 people and injuring dozens of others as forecasters warned of more rain. At least 18 people were killed and 66 others injured when a 10-meter wall demarking an urban forest collapsed during the night in Mumbai. Nine deaths were also caused by two wall collapses elsewhere in Maharashtra state. The monsoon season in India brings heavy rains from June to September that cause flooding and other damage. Yesterday's rains also flooded roads in Mumbai and covered train tracks. 
Mumbai has witnessed incessant rainfall over the past few days and floodwaters have entered homes. Weather officials said Mumbai received the highest rainfall in a decade over the two-day period since Sunday. Authorities have warned of a heat wave in Serbia and the rest of the Balkans as the hot weather which has recently afflicted Western Europe moves eastwards. Temperatures were expected to soar to 39 degrees Celsius in Serbia through showers in the evening could provide some relief. Penguins and seals at Belgrade Zoo have been cooling off in pools which staff said was being filtered and kept at a refreshing 20 degrees Celsius. Cisterns with drinking water have been installed in Belgrade parks with doctors warning the elderly to stay indoors. The surge in temperatures comes after weeks of unusually severe thunderstorms in parts of Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania, Bosnia and Croatia, which have triggered floods and extreme humidity. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear skies will prevail over most of the governorates with chances of low clouds and fog late at night and early morning over the coasts of the Arabian Sea. Clear to partly cloudy skies with chances of intermittent drizzle are expected over the governorate of the Far. Winds will be south easterly light to moderate, seas will be moderate with a maximum wave height of 2 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos issues two royal decrees. The State Council discusses the proposals of the advertisement regulation and training system. And the 2020 e-census for residents, houses and establishments works on building a comprehensive and cohesive database to link between social and economic development plans in the Sultanate. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin from all of us here at the newsroom and the studios. It's good night.